Mainstream media. Mainstream media is such a joke, guys. Such a joke. I've been wanting to do a video about this for a while, and I finally have gotten my perfect opportunity. My perfect opportunity to illustrate to you guys how much of a joke mainstream media is, how they fabricate whatever type of things they want to fabricate, and not look at the right side of things. And and uh, we're going to talk specifically about Snapchat today and the way they've treated Snapchat through the mainstream media today. Now, whether you're bullish short term, bullish long term, bearish short term, bearish long term on Snapchat, that has nothing to do with this video. This video has to do with a way a company that's beaten down gets treated. And I've seen it time after time again, where a company's uh, stock will go down substantially or, or a decent amount and the mainstream media will bash it. And I've seen when, when things are going great, as far as that stock going up, doesn't necessarily mean the business is going great, just the stock going up, mainstream media treats it like hypes it out and all these kinds of things, guys. I've witnessed this time and time again for years and years. And you know, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize how biased media can be and how um, they, will, they will fabricate lies, how they will um, you know, show whatever alternative facts they want to show a lot of times. I mean, I think my first time my eyes really got opened up to the to mainstream media and the way they can be biased was in 2008. That was the first time I really started watching news and whatnot, and it was around election time, and I realized how a certain network could be so biased toward one candidate, and another network could be so biased toward another candidate, and it really opened up my eyes, and it kind of took me from a naive, you know, I, at 18 years, I was around 18 years old when it was 2008, kind of took me from being a naive kid of realizing, to realizing, you know, things are so bad out there, like, like networks have big bias that they want to get across, and big uh, agendas and they'll do anything for views and some of these kinds of things guys it really opened up my eyes at that time and uh it, you know it's sad when you kind of realize that and you come to that realization because you up until that point you think everything's innocent like you think you know there's there shouldn't be any bias in the news or those kinds of things and then you realize there's a ridiculous bias so obviously politics is one thing I want to stick to the financial side. So last night, before I go to bed, I turn on CNBC. It's like three in the morning, just because I want to see like how they're twisting things as far as Snapchat goes. I don't have to wait very long. It's like five, ten minutes in the show. They start talking about Snapchat. The interviewer guy who's interviewing this this analyst for Snapchat, right? The way he's interviewing him is totally trying to get the analyst to say something negative about Snapchat. Like you can, you can tell like the way his tone is, the way he's trying to address these questions. He wants the, the, the analyst to say something negative about Snapchat, try to get as much negativity out of the analyst as possible towards Snapchat. Not toward getting anything good out of him. And every time the analyst would start talking good about Snapchat, he would kind of like cut him off and move to the next question. Like cut him off, move to the next question. And it's like, Okay, you're, you're obviously trying to get across a certain agenda here, dude. Um, and so that kept happening. And then toward the end, he asked him, well, if, would you tell your clients to buy it right now or, or not? And the guy, the analyst goes, I would not tell my clients to buy it right now. And the guy goes something like, exactly, that's my point. Like, what, dude, you're paid, you're paid to report the news. You're paid to report the news. You're not like out there as an investor. You should not be giving any bias toward an investment or another. You're not even an investor. You get paid. Your job, your job, what you get paid to do is report the news, not give a biased opinion on what you think it is. Like you're not an investor. You're just a, you're just a guy that reports the news. So it's frustrating for me to see that. And I've seen it time and time again. So then, uh, my son wakes me up this morning, and I'm all sleepy, and I'm like, Ugh. So I walk out to the living room, I turn on the TV, and uh, the, the TV was still on CNBC, because no one had turned on the TV since I had turned it off last night, right? And, and it was just on for a second, a second, and they happened to be talking about Snapchat, and I just watched it for like literally 30 to 45 seconds. And the chick on there, um, she said something uh, to, the, to the, you know, like, her word, her word choice was something like, investors feel like Snapchat's done as a company or something like that. And I'm like, 
What? What? Did you just see the numbers they reported? They reported 8 million more users using the platform daily. They just reported 296% revenue growth. They're done as a company. What? Oh, this company's four years old. Like, what are you smoking? What are you talking about, lady? Like, are you are you serious? I like right off the bat, it's one of those things when you're when you're really sleepy, just like wakes you up immediately, just because you're like, what did I just hear? Huh? Like, are you kidding me? And I'm just like, oh. So then we go ahead and we look at some of these online publications, right? And the word choice they use for these headlines is amazing to me. Let's look at CNBC here. CNBC's headlines here. After disastrous, disastrous first quarter or first report, Wall Street is increasingly worried Facebook is crushing Snapchat. Disaster's first quarter report. What? What? Like, do, do, do they have any clue what disastrous even means? This company just reported 8 million more daily active users, 296% revenue growth. The only company in the entire world to have daily active users go up that much and revenue go up that much. The only company in the world. And they say disastrous earnings report is um, yeah, Facebook is crushing Snapchat. We don't know if Facebook's crushing Snapchat. Facebook's been around since 2005. Snapchat's been around since 2013. Like there's an eight year head start on Facebook. We don't know if, if Facebook's crushing them or anything like that. They, some people will look at daily active users. Something uh, Facebook uses and Twitter users is what's in this is something that no one even looks at because they're, they're just not educated enough to look at these kind of things. They don't care enough. They don't have enough time to look at these kind of things like I do. They don't understand that Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they use what's called growth hacks. Growth hacks meaning, let's spam you some emails if you haven't got on today or got on this month. Let's spam you a bunch of emails. Let's send you a bunch of notifications. Hey, your friend said such and such. Hey, log into your account and you haven't updated your birthday. Hey, log into your account and do this. And every time you just log in for just a second, that counts as a daily active user. That counts as a monthly active user. So those growth hacks, those are things Snapchat doesn't do because they're things that will hurt your business long term because you'll end up turning off people like me because Facebook would spam the hell out of me because I wouldn't use it for a few days. And so I actually deleted all my Facebook because I don't even care to go on Facebook anymore. And they spam me so damn much that I don't, I don't, I unsubscribed from everything. So there's 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 two tactics you can use. Those ones that will get your numbers there for what you need, just you know, growth hack it however you can, try to get people on, right? Or you use Snapchat's thing that's like, we're gonna we're gonna take the real people that actually want to get on, we're gonna count those. So there's a big difference there, and there's a lot of things people don't understand about that. And it's no different than I could have an email list for this channel. And every time a video comes out, I could spam the hell out of people and just send it, send you crazy amounts of emails. Watch my video, watch my video. Some people would absolutely watch it and because it was sent to their email, right? And I would get some people to watch it. But what, what would happen is some people that maybe, you know, um, don't want to be emailed that much, they would end up getting frustrated with me and actually not watch any of my videos anymore just because they'd be like, what the hell, you're spamming the hell out of me. I don't I don't want this. Like, you know what I mean? Quit emailing me crap. That's the way I got with Twitter. Well, Twitter I still use for because of the business and that's the only reason I use it. I don't use Twitter for pleasure. Um, I don't use Facebook, I don't use Instagram because I got sick of them spamming me. And and so, you know what I mean? There's, there's some growth hacks you can do that people don't really understand. So. Let's look at this next one. Snapchat's growth stalls in Facebook shadow. This one's by Forbes, I believe. Or no, this one's by ABC News. Excuse me, ABC News. Snapchat's growth stalls in Facebook shadow. Stock plunges. Stock plunges, that's the true part. Uh, do they know what a stall is? Let's look at the definition of a stall. So the first three don't really make sense for this, this analogy. Number two on the verb down there. A stall, stop or cause to stop making progress. His career had stalled, her career had taken off. Um, Eight million more daily active users last quarter. 296% revenue growth. And that stalling? Like uh, no conception of what stalling means apparently, holy smokes. Let's look at this next headline here from Fortune, fortune.com. Uh, Snapchat CEO Evan Spiegel trolls Mark Zuckerberg on Snap earnings call. Another thing that's totally fabricated out there. 
He did not troll him. He got he got asked a question in a very I would say it was a very disrespectful type respect. Um, if you were on the conference call, you know this guy asked this question. I'm going to read it to, for you line to line. I'm going to try to read it the way he actually said it, but I, there's no way I can even do it like uh, with throwing as much shade against Evan Spiegel as as this guy asked it. So this guy named Richard Greenfield of uh, BTIG, he said this. A quote, Mark Zuckerberg opened up F8, essentially saying that they are now a camera company with augmented reality API design to let the whole world in and innovate. And while he didn't say it directly, it really sounded like he wants to bury Snapchat. So I think the question for every investor's mind is, does Facebook scare you? Does Facebook fucking scare you, Snapchat man? Like, like that's how the question, like, I wish I, he would have used the actual F word in there because that's how that shit sounded like on the conference call. If you go back and you listen to the conference call, it was, it was like a put it in your face type question. And this is how Evan Spiegel responded to the question, which was, uh, you know, already throwing, throwing a lot of shade at Evan Spiegel in the first place by this question. So Evan Spiegel said, Look, I think there's one thing I would like to communicate today. It's probably just the overall importance of creativity to our business. And I mean this from every perspective, from the team we hire to how they work together, the creative culture that we have, the products that we we have and inspire people to create. And I think our overall strategy, obviously, which is to deliver value through creativity. And I think the bottom line is like, if you want to be a creative company, you've got to get comfortable with and be Basically, enjoy the fact that people are going to copy your products if you make great stuff, which is absolutely true. People do copy if you make great stuff. It doesn't matter what you're doing. And I think we've seen a lot in technology. When Google came along, every everyone felt like they really needed a search strategy. When Facebook came along, everybody felt like they needed a social strategy. And now I think with Snap, with our company, we believe that everyone is going to develop a camera strategy because I think we really help people understand how valuable the camera is because it's really the center of everything we do. And I think at the end of the day, just because Yahoo, for example, has a search box doesn't mean they're Google. What's so wrong about that? What is so wrong about that? He's not trolling Zuckerberg at all and flipping him the bird. In my opinion, at least, he's simply stating that just because a company copies us doesn't mean they are us. It doesn't mean they've accomplished what we're going to accomplish in the future. Like, like just because Google came out with Google Plus didn't mean it was going to take down Facebook, right? I mean, Google's one of the most competent companies in the world, and they couldn't find a way to succeed against Facebook, right? You know, when they try to create that whole battle there, they came to the game way too late. Uh, so just because Facebook creates um, things similar to, you know, say, uh, uh, you know, uh, Snapchat doesn't mean Facebook Snapchat. It doesn't mean they're going to accomplish the things Snapchat's going to accomplish, guys. So and then we just look at the numbers here. They they actually grew faster. They actually grew faster this quarter than they did last quarter. If you look at daily active users. Q3 2016 to Q4 2016, they only they grew 5 million daily active users. Whereas past quarter they grew 8 million. So my question is, they grew on a percent basis and on an actual number basis, they grew more daily active users than they had the previous quarter. Why wasn't the story on mainstream media when they, when they were going public, Snapchat only grew 5 million daily active users last month, growth is slowing a lot. Because technically now they're growing faster than they were the previous quarter. So why wasn't that the narrative before? <sighs> like I said, I've seen it time and time again with company after company on these financial net networks that are mainstream media. They'll bash a stock when it's down. They'll hype it out like crazy when it's up. And they'll just, they'll just go with whatever the trend is at that time. They'll fabricate lies if they want to. Or they'll just fabricate the truth and they'll look at their alternative facts they want to look at. Or, or whatever they want to look at to focus on what they want to focus. Even if 99% of it's good. They'll focus on the 1% that's bad if that's their agenda. And even if 99% of it's bad, they'll focus on the 1% uh, that's good if that's their agenda, guys. They're, they're in their agenda at the end of the day is to get to get clicks, to get views, and all those kinds of things, and they'll do it any way possible because we know their platforms are hurting more and more as time goes on because more and more people are cable cutting from the cable networks. Uh, more and more people are going to video rather than looking at websites and some of those kinds of things, guys. So they'll do whatever it takes to get the views in there, and that's just a world we have to deal with. But 
It's important you guys understand it. If you don't, I'm sure a lot of you guys that have been around the block for a while, you understand exactly what I'm saying. You've seen mainstream media maybe tear down a stock that didn't deserve to get teared down or, or just give whatever opinion they want to give on that, guys. So hope you enjoyed this today. And you know what, guys? Have a great day.